Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ranjana Saxena, Associate Professor in Zoology from Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss on the module Morphology and Life Cycle of Entamoeba from the paper Parasitology. Now after studying this unit, you will be able to classify Entamoeba, Distinguish between the different species of entamoeba and identify the pathogenic species of entamoeba. Describe the morphology of entamoeba histolytica and explain its life cycle. You will also be able to compare the life cycle of different species of entamoeba. As you can see here, there are different species of entamoeba. Three of them are there in the slide, entamoeba histolytica, entamoeba coli and entamoeba gingivalis. Some other species of entamoeba are also there like entamoeba dispar, entamoeba hartmani, entamoeba polyki. Entamoeba is derived from the Greek word entos, entos meaning from within and amoeba a change. It was defined by Casagrande and Barbagallo in 1895. Entamoeba is a acellular anaerobic parasitic protistin found in vertebrates. Of all the different species of entamoeba, only entamoeba histolytica is pathogenic to man and other vertebrates. It causes amoebiasis, amoebic dysentery and other extra intestinal lesions like the liver abscess in man. E. gingivalis, entamoeba gingivalis, it's a harmless commensal which is found in the large numbers in the mouth with oral uh, hygiene, poor oral hygiene. Entamoeba coli is a commensal of the lumen of the colon part of the large intestine. Entamoeba hartmani is a non pathogenic and closely resembles Entamoeba histolytica in morphology, except that it is smaller in size than Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba polyki is a commonly naturally occurring parasite in monkeys and pigs but rarely found in man but if it is found in man it can cause diarrhea just like entamoeba histolytica. After giving you a general account of the various types of entamoeba let us talk about the history of entamoeba. Entamoeba gingivalis was the first amoeba to be described in man by Gross in 1849, in the Tartar of T. The detailed account of the parasite, Entamoeba gingivalis, was given by von Provazac in 1904. Lewis described Entamoeba coli for the first time in 1870. Cunningham in 1871 and Grassi in 1878 reported its presence in the intestine of healthy persons. Entamoeba histolytica was first described by W. D. Lambel in 1859 in the colonic autopsy of a child who died of diarrhea. Fedor Losch in 1875 described the pathogenic nature of Entamoeba histolytica. He inoculated the parasite through the rectum of a dog and found that the dog had developed dysentery, thus proving the pathogenic nature of the parasite. Karchilis in 1886 confirmed entamoeba as a causative agent of amoebic dysentery and amoebic liver abscess. Dobel described the life cycle of the parasite in 1925. Brampt in 1925 described Entamoeba dispar. Shorten in 1903 differentiated the pathogenic and non pathogenic form of Entamoeba. Now let us classify Entamoeba before going further. It belongs to the kingdom Protista, phylum Sarcomastigophora, subphylum Sarcodina, superclass Rhizopoda. Class Lobosa, that is, it has got lobose type of pseudopodia, and this classification has been taken from fifth edition Bots. Entamoeba histolytica infection 
is worldwide in distribution. As you can see in the map, it's more common in the tropics and the subtropics. It is the third leading cause of death in the developing countries of the world. About 50 million people are infected by Entamoeba histolytica and about 40,000 to 100,000 deaths occur in a year. It lives in the mucosa and submucosa of the large intestine that is the cecum and sigmoidorectal region of humans. Entamoeba histolytica it exists in two forms, minuta form which is also non-pathogenic form, it is the non-invasive form and the virulent or the pathogenic form or the tissue invading form. Minuta form is smaller in size and lives in the lumen of the large intestine whereas the virulent form lives in the mucosa and the submucosa of the large intestine as you can see in the figure. The host for Entamoeba histolytica are human, apes and monkeys. However, they are also found in pigs, dogs, cats and rats. But the reservoir of Entamoeba histolytica are human and monkeys only. Asymptomatic human carriers basically act as reservoir for the spread of Entamoeba histolytica. As such, there are no animal reservoir for this parasite. Morphology of Entamoeba histolytica. Let us talk about the various forms of Entamoeba histolytica. Now these Entamoeba histolytica can exist in three forms, trophozoid, precyst and cyst. Trophozoid is the only feeding stage or free moving stage. Trophos mean food and nourishment, zoid means zone. It lives in the mucosa and submucosa of the large intestine which is the colon and the cecum part of the large intestine and it is the invasive form of the parasite. Precyst is a transient stage between the trophozoids and the cyst and is formed in the lumen of the large intestine. Cyst is the non-feeding infective stage of the parasite found in the lumen of the large intestine. Let us talk about trophozoids. As I said, trophozoid is the motile stage, the feeding stage. So you can see the pseudopodia, it moves about. Whatever little movement is there, it is because of this pseudopodia. The gliding movement it has is because of this pseudopodia. And the size of the trophozoid varies from 8 mu m to 40 mu m with an average size of about 20 mu m to 25 mu m. Since it is a amoeba, the shape is not fixed and it constantly changes its shape by thrusting out pseudopodia. The cytoplasm is differentiated into a clear outer ectoplasm which is thin and translucent and a central fluid filled granular endoplasm. It is this endoplasm which contains the organelles like nucleus, food vacuoles, erythrocytes, granules and tissue debris. The trophozoid is an anaerobic parasite. It lacks mitochondria, Golgi bodies and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Contractile vacuole, which is a characteristic feature of protestants, is also wanting in them. Can you think of a possible reason for this? Well, you may be right. Entamoeba histolytica is an endoparasite and lives in an isotonic environment and hence does not need to osmoregulate. The nucleus is the most distinguishing feature of Entamoeba. It is spherical in shape, about 3.5 mu m in size, lined externally by a thin, delicate nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane is lined internally by a single layer of evenly distributed chromatin granules. The chromatin granules are in the form of small dots. A compact small endosome, also known as karyosome, which is surrounded by a clear halo. Halo means a ring. And this endosome is centrally located. 
nucleus striations. Striations means spoke-like lines. They radiate out from the endosome and extend up to the nuclear membrane. Talking about the locomotion, as I have already told you just now, that it has got pseudopodia and constantly changes its shape by giving out pseudopodia. So the trophozoids show slow gliding movement in one direction. They move about with the help of the pseudopodia. What is pseudopodia? Pseudopodia are finger-like flowing extensions of the cytoplasm, which may be short and wide or long and narrow. And the locomotion is brought about by the forward extension of the ectoplasm, followed by the granular endoplasm, which then flows into the finger-like extension. The direction of movement may change suddenly by giving out pseudopodia at some other site. The movement of the trophozoid is dependent on the consistency of the surrounding medium, age of the parasite, and the temperature of the host. As I have just mentioned, that trophozoid is the feeding stage. So, what is the food of this trophozoid? Food consists of bacteria and other cytolized organic substances found in the host's intestine. Food is taken in by entamoeba, either by phagocytosis or pinocytosis, and a food vacuole is formed. The food vacuole contains RBC, which may be in various stages of digestion. The digestion is intracellular within the food vacuole. The trophozoids are exclusively parasitic forms. Having talked about trophozoids, the next one is the precyst. I told you that between the trophozoids and the cyst is the transient stage, which is known as the precyst. Now, precyst is smaller in size. 10 to 20 mu m and it is smaller than the trophozoid but larger than the cyst, round or oval with a blunt pseudopodia. Now the pseudopodia is retracting. It has a re relatively large nucleus that retains all the characteristics of the nucleus of a trophozoid. The trophozoid extrudes food vacuoles before encystment so that the endoplasm is free from red blood cells and other ingested food particles. As you can see in the slide, the cyst exists in three forms. Immature uninucleate cyst, a binucleate cyst, and mature quadrinucleate cyst. The trophozoid becomes completely round and is surrounded by a transparent highly retractile double wall resistant cyst wall. The cyst wall varies greatly in size from 6 to 9 mu m, which is a small race, to 12 to 15 mu m, which is a large race. The cytoplasm is clear and hyaline, that is transparent and glassy. The chitinous cyst wall makes it resistant to the gastric contents of the stomach, adverse environmental conditions, and to the chlorine concentration found in the potable water. Before encystment, the parasite eliminates food vacuoles, as I've already told you in the precess case, and accumulates considerable amount of food in the form of glycogen mass and black bodies called chromatoidal bodies. These chromatoidal bodies are large, smooth oblong rods with rounded ends. They may be one to several in number. They are called chromatoidal bars or chromatoidal bodies because they stain as chromatin with hematoxylin stain. It is believed that the chromatoidal bodies contain DNA and phosphates and serve as storage for ribosomes. Now, talking about the life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica, first of all, students, you should know that it is a monogenetic parasite. And another host is required only for the perpetuation of a species. The infection begins when the host swallows the mature quadrinuclease cyst along with the contaminated food or water, as you can see here. 
As the cyst wall is resistant to the acidic content of the stomach, the quadrinucleate cyst passes unaltered into the small intestine where existation takes place. In the intestine, the cyst wall is digested by the action of trypsin in the alkaline medium at a temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. During this process, the cytoplasmic body retracts and loosens from the cyst wall. Pseudopodia are formed, as you can see here, at various points and vigorous amoeboid movements occur within the cyst. Frequently, the pseudopodia press against the wall at certain spots as though the imprisoned organism was searching for exit. Eventually, a tetranucleate amoeba known as metacyst, metacyst having four nuclei, emerges up. Immediately on emergence, the four nuclei of the metacyst undergo division to form eight nuclei. And each nuclei then gets surrounded by a bit of its own cytoplasm and leads an independent existence as it is evident. Thus, how many amoebili are formed? Eight amoebili are formed. These are known as metacystic or metacyclic trophozoids which are actively motile. The metacystic trophozoids move down to the cecum and iliocloical region of the intestine. The young amoebili being actively motile invade the tissues and finally lodge themselves in the mucosa and submucosa of the large intestine. That is its final abode. They prefer this site. Why do they prefer this site? Because it contains the organic material, which is food, pH and gases in this part of the large intestine are more stable and ideal for the existence of Entamoeba histolytica trophozoites. Here the trophozoites grow at the expense of the living tissues and multiply by simple binary fission. The trophozoites then secrete histolysin, a protein which causes necrosis and destruction of the host tissue and helps the parasite to derive nourishment from the dissolved dead tissues. However, there are some non-invasive trophozoites that remain in the lumen of the large intestine and multiply by binary fission. These trophozoites feed on the host nutrients from the surrounding medium. Some of the trophozoites from the cells of the mucosa and the submucosa after repeated binary fission move back into the lumen of the intestine. Now, when the conditions become unfavorable for the trophozoites in the lumen of the large intestine, they start to develop a cyst wall. So, a pre-cyst is first formed, which soon becomes a uninucleate immature cyst. The nucleus within the cyst divides to form a binucleate cyst. Now, the nucleus divides again for the second time to form a quadrinucleate or a tetranucleate mature cyst, which is the infective stage. We have already talked about the uninucleate, binucleate, and quadrinucleate cyst when we were talking about the morphology. The transformation of trophozoite into a mature quadrinucleate cyst is called encystation, and it is a means of protection of a species from extin extinction. Encystation does not take place in the tissues of man, neither in the intestinal mucosa nor in the liver, lungs, etc. Thus, actually, the metastatic invasion of the trophozoites for all biological purposes is a dead end for the parasite. Encystation takes place only a few hours and the mature quadrinucleus cyst can remain viable in the lumen of the large intestine only for two days. Now these mature quadrinucleate cysts are passed out along with the feces of the host 
as you can see in this particular life cycle, about 45 million cysts may be voided out from one infective person in a day. The cysts are resistant to the environmental conditions and can live for a few weeks to a few months depending upon the temperature. The thermal death would occur only at 50 degrees centigrade. Moisture, however, is essential for the long existence of the cyst. They can live up to 10 days in a moist stool. The cysts are, however, however susceptible to desiccation. Trophozoites are also voided out along with the cyst in the feces, but they cannot survive outside the body of the host for more than an hour. And even if they are ingested by another human being during this period, they are killed in the body of the host. Can you think of a possible reason for it? Well, you may be right. Yes, they are not able to survive in the acidic environment of the stomach because of the acidic juices of the stomach. So a very important point to note is that both existation and incestation they are not a reproductive process. Encestation and existation can take place in the same host. Another host is required only for the perpetuation of the species. Now, after doing the life cycle, the morphology of Entamoeba histolytica, let us see what is the mode of infection. The mode of infection is the fecal oral route. What is the infective stage? The infective stage is the mature quadrinucleate cyst. And the source of infection? Source of infection are the carriers. The carriers of Entamoeba histolytica, which can be of two types, contact carriers and convalescent carriers. Contact carriers, people who have never suffered from amoebic dysentery and their health remains unaffected. They are healthy carriers of Entamoeba histolytica. They can shed cysts for many years. Convalescent carriers, persons who have recovered from acute amoebic dysentery. Now this we have talked about Entamoeba histolytica. As I mentioned earlier that there are many species of Entamoeba, but all others are harmless commensal. So let us talk a little bit about the other species also. Entamoeba dispar. It is a non-pathogenic morphologically similar to Entamoeba histolytica which lives in the lumen of the large intestine and lacks the capacity to invade the intestinal mucosa. The trophozoites lack the RBC, non-invasive parasite that does not evoke production of antibodies in the serum of man. Entamoeba gingivalis. This is the first amoeba if you remember when we were doing the history, to be described in man by Gross in 1849 in the soft tartar collected from the teeth of human. It has only the trophozoid stage. Cystic stage is absent in them. The trophozoid structure is same as that of Entamoeba histolytica, except that the food vacuole does not contain RBC. The food vacuole, however, contains cellular debris, bacteria, and ingested leukocytes. It is a common sal present in the margins of the gums and sometimes in the crypts of the tonsils. The infection is transmitted from the mouth of an infected person during the act of kissing, that is, oral oral contact. Trophozoite moves rapidly with the help of numerous blunt pseudopodia. The next entamoeba species that we are going to take is Entamoeba coli. It's a common cell present in the lumen of the large intestine. A non-invasive Entamoeba that exists in all the three forms, trophozoid, precyst, and cyst. The life cycle of Entamoeba coli is same as Entamoeba histolytica. However, the major difference between the two is that the infective stage, if you remember, in case of Entamoeba histolytica, was a quadrinucleate cyst. But the infective stage of Entamoeba coli is a mature cyst containing eight nuclei, which means the infective stage of Entamoeba coli is octanucleate cyst.
Now, this particular slide shows you the morphological differences between Entamoeba histolytica and Entamoeba coli. You will find that the size is also different. Entamoeba coli is larger in size, more sluggish, granular with short and blunt pseudopodia. Bacteria and other food material may be present in them, but they never contain RBC as cytoplasmic inclusions. The nuclear character is same as that of Entamoeba histolytica, but the karyosome is large and eccentrically located with thick nuclear membrane and lined with coarse chromatin granules. The cyst form, again, the cyst form is larger in case of Entamoeba coli with 1 to 8 eccentric, uh, the nucleus are 1 to 8 in number with eccentric karyosome. However, in case of Entamoeba histolytica cyst, you will find that the number of nuclei are only 1 to 4 and the central karyosome is present. So the infective stage in case of Entamoeba coli is octanucleate cysts. The chromatidal bars, which are thick bars with rounded ends in Entamoeba histolytica, but in Entamoeba coli, they are thread-like with square or pointed ends. Now the next species of Entamoeba is Entamoeba hartmanni, a non-pathogenic commensal found in the lumen of the large intestine of human. It's cosmopolitan in distribution, exists both in trophozoic and cyst stage, morphologically very similar to Entamoeba histolytica, except that it is smaller in size. The trophozoics vary in size from 4 mu m to only 12 mu m, while the cyst varies from 5 mu m to 10 mu m. The trophozoites do not inject erythrocytes. The life cycle is also similar to Entamoeba histolytica, except that it is a non-invasive entamoeba and the trophozoids are found only in the lumen of the large intestine. Now this slide shows the characteristic feature of trophozoids of various entamoeba species. And uh, you will find here that uh, the size of them is variable and talking about entamoeba histolytica, uh, it's only 8 mu m to 40 mu m with a delicate nuclear membrane lined with minute chromatin granules. So it, this slide is just a comparison and you will find that uh, except for Entamoeba histolytica, you will not find RBC as cytoplasmic inclusion in any of the other Entamoeba species. Now this particular slide shows a comparison between the cyst of various entamoeba species. And basic difference is in the chromatoidal bars in various species. You will find thick bars with rounded ends in histolytica, whereas you will find rounded ends in hartmanni and thread-like with square or pointed ends in entamoeba coli. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. We have learned that the pathogenic species of Entamoeba is Entamoeba histolytica. All others are harmless commensal. It is a monogenetic parasite that lives in the mucosa and submucosa of the large intestine of humans. The infective stage of the parasite is the quadrinucleate cyst. It enters the human body through contaminated fruits, raw vegetables, through contaminated water and food, unhygienic habits, mechanical vectors such as houseflies and cockroaches can also be a source of transmission of the parasite. The port of entry is the fecal oral route and the trophozoid is the feeding and motile pathogenic stage of the parasite. The life cycle starts when the quadrinucleate cyst is swallowed along with the contaminated food or water. As it goes unaltered through the stomach, its cessation takes place in the intestine, in the lumen of the large intestine. From there, it travels into the mucosa and submucosa of the large intestine, where it multiplies by binary fission. Now, some of these entamoeba histolytica 
will gain entry back into the lumen of the intestine and where they encyst themselves, surround themselves with the cyst wall and these encysted quadrinucleus cysts are then voided out along with the feces. However, there are certain other entamoeba which will gain entry through the portal system into the various organs of the body like the liver, the spleen, the brain etc and cause metastatic lesions. But for all biological purposes, this is a dead end for the parasite because they are not able to perpetuate the species, they are not able to insist themselves in these uh, organs.